Hello, Simon. Good to see you today. How are you doing? I'm fine, Russell. Thank you. It's good to talk to you, especially as you're the chair of our education committee in the Ecclesiastical Law Society. And I want to ask you about that today and all the work the committee does. But first of all, maybe you could say something about how you got into ecclesiastical law in the first place. Well, I got into it really starting as somebody involved very much in the church's adult education work. Uh, and a, a long time ago, I, I was asked by the Diocese of Oxford to write uh, a code of conduct for clergy. It was in the light of something that happened many years ago in Sheffield with a particular uh, problem with the, with the church there, which went across the whole of the Church of England. So I became very interested in, in ethics uh, and good ministerial practice. And that gradually sort of moved into understanding law and the guidelines uh, and the provisions we already have uh, for making sure that our practice is good and, and it's safe. Um, and then when I became an archdeacon uh, a few years ago, uh, it was something that clearly was much more on my desk than it had been before. But I was able to bring uh, an interest in good practice and what you might think of as the harder law stuff uh, together. Because uh, one of the things that really interests me is how people kind of, if you like, live out church law uh, in, in the ordinary, everyday church life that we all share and, and all enjoy. Uh, um, absolutely. And it's interesting, it's probably worth saying, isn't it, that neither you or I are, are lawyers um, no, no. And, and the society is, is open to everyone who's got an interest in church law, whether that's uh, clergy, lay members of the church, but church members like, like, like you and me who've developed that interest, or lawyers who have the interest in church law or practice in the area. So we've got a, a huge wide variety of membership, haven't we? We have indeed, uh, and it's important really that we have that because church law is something that impacts on the life of every parish church, uh, every chaplaincy, uh, the role of people like church wardens and clergy uh, and other ministers. Uh, and we really need to make sure that we understand what we're doing and, and why we're doing it. And I've always felt as a, as a vicar and, and also as a trainer uh, that it was my responsibility to ensure that the people I worked with, especially lay people, who themselves usually not lawyers, um, understood the kind of the guidelines and the parameters and the boundaries uh, of the work that, that we do. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a lawyer. I, I'm a kind of jobbing vicar these days, uh, uh, as I think you are, uh, and, uh, and it's still important for us. Uh, absolutely. But what you're saying there brings us on to the Education Committee. The mm. Ecclesiastical Law Society is a charity whose main purpose is education. So the work of your committee is absolutely the centre of, of what we do. Do you want to say something about the Education Committee? Sam? Yes, I, it's, it's, a, it's a really nice group of people to, to work with. And of course, because we're a voluntary society, it's made up of people who've, uh, who volunteered to be part of it. Uh, and that's always so much better than kind of press ganging people into, into doing things. So we have people with, uh, with different passions around the whole thing. So we've, we've got uh, one or two people whose particular way of looking at things comes from a theological and an educational point of view as much as of law. Uh, we've got people with experience in adult education. We've got people whose daily bread and butter uh, is church law, as registrars and, and clerks and so on. Uh, and so as a group together, we have a kind of complementary balance of skills and of interests and, uh, uh, and all that comes together when we do face-to-face -face training, we, we take up different parts of it and um, hopefully it then is more accessible uh, to the people who come along. So what are the sorts of things the committee's been doing so far in, in the society? Well, we started off really uh, afresh. We were kind of put together again, if you like, about two and a half, three years ago. Uh, and we started by thinking the best thing we could do was to try and network with people who would offer uh, training and support for others uh, in the way they handle church law. Um, so we were aiming really at uh, educators uh, and at registrars who often take part in, in curacy training and, and so on. Uh, and so we did some work around training trainers. Uh, and from that, uh, we actually built up quite a wide network of people who are still kind of interested and with us and still come along to the sessions. But we branched out. We branched out very much more into 
thinking about how we can make things uh, accessible to a wider range of people. So our most recent offering uh, has been around good practice in parochial ministry. Uh, and so as well as registrars, occasional Darson secretary, even chancellors uh, coming along, we've had church wardens, we've had parish clergy, we've had curates, uh, we've had archdeacons, people from a wide range of church life, um, all around the same kind of questions about how we do what we do well, and particularly how changes in the law um, need to be taken on board at, at so many different levels. Mm, absolutely. So these are training events, aren't they, that you've done in different places around the country, yeah. um, a day with a lunch. Um, good lunch, yes. Yeah, it's always lunch. important. <laughs> absolutely. And you found that, 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 so it's not just people who are the, the registrars and chancellors, but people in all aspects of church life interested to know about their roles and responsibilities and how the law affects the life of the church. Absolutely. Um, and they come along uh, from different aspects. It's a, quite a challenge for us who offer the training face to face because we've prepared uh, various sessions uh, and we never quite know who's going to be there. So we always leave time for responses and questions. Uh, and it keeps us very lively thinking on our feet because you're never quite sure what's going to be asked. Uh, and if we as a group leading can't uh, answer, we've usually got people in the audience who can. Uh, and so it becomes very much not just from the front, uh, but much more of a conversation and a dialogue. Uh, and we do quite a lot of work around um, case studies, scenarios, uh, which draw people into conversation. Uh, and that seems to be a very important way of, of doing it. So what we're talking about may be quite uh, academic and certainly is legal, but we kind of grounded if we can in, in real experience and, and real life. Sure. For the uh, purposes of those who might be watching this video sometime in the future, we're talking on Zoom, partly because we're in the lockdown with the COVID-19 yeah. mm. at the moment. Um, mm. And so the physical meetings that the committee organises can't take place at the moment, but there are online resources that the education committee has developed, aren't there? There are. What we've done is uh, we've taken the PowerPoints that we've been using in our presentations uh, and we put them on the Ecclesiastical Law Society website and they're free for anybody to download and use in their own training. Um, I know that some people have used them, uh, registrars have, have used them as the basis for what they do with, with curates and other clergy. But I also know that one or two people have actually used them in their own parochial church councils, particularly the case studies. Um, to engage people who have that trustee and, and governance responsibility uh, in some of the issues that, that are around. Um, we put the case studies up there. We've also got the answers, or at least as far as we can get the answers. So you don't have to kind of go scrabbling around uh, for those. Um, and that's proved very, very worthwhile. Uh, we do it with a bit of a, a health warning, uh, and that is that at the time when we post these things up, uh, we think they're reasonably um, accurate and okay, um, but if you use them, you may have to modify them and change them uh, in the light of other things that have, have gone on. So you, you take them, use them with your own responsibility, but we're happy to let them go out there uh, and let them be used. And we're going to add to that. Um, we want to add to it in a different way. Um, hopefully uh, in the next few months and before we can all get together again face to face we're going to take some of those presentations and actually record voiceover uh, so they can become things on our, our youtube channel uh, that people can download and, and use as part uh, perhaps part of a curriculum of training or a, a, a range of training that they take into themselves or are offered uh, by any of our training institutions uh, i think a lot of uh, the academic institutions of our country have suddenly learned how to do training in all kinds of online ways. And, and I think we're, we're perhaps a little bit behind, but we're not going to be too far behind, hopefully. Oh, absolutely. Well, it's exciting times with all these different things developing. Uh, is there anything else you want to um, let people know about the Education Committee at the moment, Simon? I, I think uh, we're trying to think about the future. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to see exactly what. Um, if we're allowed to gather together again in the autumn, we hope to put on one training day in London 
uh, and for that to be a, a modified repeat of one we did recently uh, on the role and responsibilities of church wardens. Uh, because it may well be actually that in the light of what's happened that church wardens' responsibilities do change, if not in law, actually in practice. And then for 21, um, always assuming we can go ahead with uh, our workshops around the country, uh, we've been thinking very much uh, about taking forward the role and responsibility of the PCC. So beginning to explore that trustee role, uh, beginning to do a little bit more about um, the role of DACs and the faculty jurisdiction, kind of thing that impacts on parish life all the time. And rather than do a lot of a whole group or face-to-face -to, -face, um, to have some of that but also to break down into workshops which might be a bit more elective so we might run half a dozen workshops and you would have time to go to two but if you came with two or three other people from your parish or or wherever you come from uh, you could share that around and between you cover it all um, it's a it's a new venture a bit more flexible uh, and we'll see how it how it goes and we'll be drawing in people we haven't used yet i think to lead the workshops and do the presentations so um you might be getting an invitation russell <laughs> <laughs> thank you well it's great to talk to you great to talk to you today simon and, and you uh, and you thanks for your th thanks for your time and, and to all the committee the education committee uh, for all the, the training that, that's put on which is su such an important arm of the society's work thank you russell take care bye-bye